And then Michael Cohen, you know, then, then it's released. It, it was uh, uh, Jason Leopold had this story, and I think it was Vox. Um, the story came out that, that Michael Cohen was a witness to efforts by Donald Trump to tell basically Michael Cohen to lie before Congress. And not only Cohen, this was uh, apparently, you know, and, and by the way, this is not from Cohen's testimony. I mean, Giuliani and, and Trump's spokesperson were both on Fox this morning, uh, Giuliani yesterday, saying, oh, Cohen's just lying. And Trump tweeted that this morning. He's lying again. He's trying to reduce his sentence. Check out his, his father-in-law, right? So here's, you know, mafia boss Trump. And it's not the Italian mafia. It's the, it's the, uh, the, the, the oligarch mafia from the former Soviet Union. That's who, who Trump is a part of. That's, the, that's the, the, the mafia that he's a part of. This is the, the, the oligarch mafia Don who is now sitting in the White House saying, hey, nice family there. Be ashamed if anything happened to your father-in-law, Michael. Really? Well, it turns out it wasn't Cohen's testimony at all. It was documents and recordings that are in the possession of Robert Mueller saying that Donald Trump ordered these people to lie before Congress including Cohen and his son and his daughter. And speaking of his daughter, Ivanka Trump issues carefully worded denial of BuzzFeed, oh, it was BuzzFeed, I said Fox, Fox, BuzzFeed report on Trump Tower Moscow. Now, listen to this carefully. It's like, you know, the guy driving the, the, the getaway car in a bank robbery, his excuse is always, well, I was only minimally involved. I wasn't there for the robbery. I was just outside, you know, in the car. Here's the quote. Ms. Trump did not know about this proposal until after a non-binding letter of intent had been signed, never talked to anyone outside the organization about the proposal, never visited the projected project site, in other words, Moscow, and was only minimally involved. Yeah. Just like that, uh, <laughs> just like that guy driving the getaway car. I was only minimally involved. This is nuts. I mean, this is just plain old flat out nuts. And now Nancy Pelosi, because Trump leaked that they were going to Afghanistan. I mean, it's something you just never do, right? If, if Barack Obama, as president, had leaked a trip to Afghanistan by a bunch of Republicans, he would have been impeached the next day. I mean, this is, this is blowing up national security. That, in, in my opinion, that in and of itself is a crime against our republic. So anyhow, that's the stuff that's at the top of the news right now. Um, that said, it's as I said, it's Anything Goes Friday. We can talk about whatever you would like. Mike in Lomita, California, listening on KPFK. Hey, Mike, what's on your mind today? Yeah, I got ticked off by a caller earlier in the week who was complaining about the U.S. government possibly getting involved in health care because it's not one of the specifically enumerated uh, functions in Article 1. Well, I think if any originalist or strict constructionist is true to himself or herself, they should also be originalist about the medical care itself. Now, in 1788, we did not have cases of Ebola getting on jet planes and coming to the U.S. within hours. So I guess there wasn't any need for a U.S. Public Health Service or a Centers for Disease Control. Actually, in 17, well, it was 1789, um, there, uh, maybe 1790. The, the year after the Republic was founded, George Washington authorized medical services in Washington, D.C. for veterans and for the poor. We had government-funded health care literally the first year or two of the Republic. But spurred by that comment, I looked up our founding father physician, Dr. Benjamin Rush. Yep. Surgeon Good friend General, of Jefferson. Surgeon General, the uh, Continental Army Medical Director of the Corps of Discovery of Lewis and Clark in 1803. Yep. And his uh, favorite treatment, if he showed up in his emergency room complaining of belly pain and vomiting and all that, he would probably have bled you because mm -hmm. that was his preferred method of treatment for yellow fever victims. Or he would have loaded you up with heavy metals like mercury. Right. In fact, he supplied these pills for the Lewis and Clark expedition, which were more than 50% mercury. And archaeologists today have been able to trace the precise route of Lewis and Clark by tracing the mercury from these uh, anti uh, from these laxative pills that he prescribed for the oh that's amazing traveling. you know they, there's there's a story behind that mercury uh, uh, was called quicksilver 
and the doctors of the age used it because it stimulates the immune system. The body knows that it's being poisoned and it just freaks out. It kicks into a high fever response, which is actually antibacterial. You know, it's, it's like it helps the body fight off bacterial infections. The problem is it poisons you with mercury. But they didn't know that at the time, and that's why they were called quick doctors or quicksilver doctors. And that phrase over the years evolved into quack doctors. That's where the phrase quack doctor came from. As, uh, as you know, modern drugs were being developed in the late 19th, early 20th century, penicillin and whatnot, um, and coming into the market in a big way, and the medical profession was starting to license itself and things like that, they referred to the old mercury doctors, you know, like Ben Rush, as, as quack doctors or quick well, doctors. You know, something else they didn't have in Dr. Rush's age was the half a million dollar, and I've seen cases that probably were up into the one million dollar range of medical bills for people who have severe injuries and require a lot of intense yeah. treatment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well said, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for listening to KPFK, and thanks for the call. It's Anything Goes Friday here on the Tom Hartman Program, the place where smart people get their news.